Hey guys, it's Alora, long time no see, but what's new there, am I right? So today I wanted to do just a quick impromptu video here with my hot cocoa and my water fountain going. Um, just a cozy little video about the books that I'm currently reading. So I don't know about you, but I used to be really good about setting this rule for myself, right? So I was reading a book and I had to finish that book before I could pick up another book. And this rule applied simultaneously to physical copies and audiobooks, so I could have one audiobook running, one physical book running at any given time, but I had to finish the book before I would let myself move on to another. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's gone out the window. Um, it was a little stressful for me because, you know, maybe I would be in the middle of a really thick fantasy book and I would decide, oh gosh, I really want to read this graphic novel, but then I would make myself wait, and it just, I don't know, it didn't make me feel good. So I decided to scrap that, and right now I'm in the middle of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think technically more than seven. Let's see. Let's see as we go along. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. So the first book that I want to talk about today that I'm actively reading is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. I have been told about this book countless times and it's been talked about so much on booktube about uh, in lists about adult fiction and favorite adult literary fiction and things like that and it was a finalist for the Man Booker Prize which is a it's essentially a British literature prize that is for speculative contemporary fiction there's probably a technical definition that I'm not hitting, but this book I was told going into it, don't know anything about it, you don't want to know anything, you just want to go into it knowing it will be good. And so I listened to that and I didn't find out anything about it other than people thought it was good. And it's a... Uh, so I don't know how to talk about it, right? I think that what I can say is that the story is told from the perspective of a woman looking back on her childhood growing up in a boarding school and there's a mystery involved. And I think that's probably all I want to tell you. I'm about two-thirds of the way through it right now and I am enjoying it. I don't love it. I feel a little bit unsettled by it. Um, so if you're easily unsettled, it's not scary. Um, it's just a little bit like, ooh, at times. Ooh, that's my notebook that is my bookmark right now. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's one that I'm in the middle of. The audiobook that I am currently listening to is by Marie Forleo and it's called Everything is Figure Outable. This is a self-help practical tools for becoming your best self kind of book and I am right about 50% of the way through this one. I am liking it, but I feel like a lot of this information has already been presented on her YouTube channel, so a lot of it feels repetitive to me, um, but repetition isn't a bad thing, so I'll let you know how I feel about it when I finish. I am listening to another audiobook that I had started before Everything is Figure Outable, and that audiobook is the Girl of Fire and Thorns. This is a book by Ray Carson that follows this, I think, 16-year-old young girl who was born with the Godstone in her, so it means that she is destined to save her people, essentially, at some point in time, at this amorphous date that she doesn't uh, or isn't aware of, and kind of the pressures that that puts on her. This book has a trigger warning for uh, anybody with an eating disorder, I would say, it could cover several of them, so definitely be wary of that, but it is a fantasy novel and it takes place in kind of a desert setting uh, that feels very South American to me, but it's a fantasy world so it's not, uh, you know, exactly based off any one culture to the best of my knowledge. <laughs> the camera died, where were we? Um, let's go move on to this one. So. The next book that I have started reading and is taking me a long time to get through, I mean, I, I only started reading it a little bit ago, is the new Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire Illustrated Edition. So I read the first three Illustrated Editions when they came out uh, once per year around October, just in time for, you know, Christmas shopping. And now it's been two years since The Prisoner of Azkaban came out, so it took them two years to make this fourth version. And I have to say, I love Jim Kay's art. Uh, it's absolutely stunning. The illustrations in this are beautiful. Uh, it does take a long time to get through. The original book was over 700 pages long, and, you know, there's a lot of just straight-up text in this where it's like a textbook chapter um, or a textbook page. So it takes a while, but I'm working my way through, and that's a really cozy thing to be doing, revisiting the world of Harry Potter. I honestly haven't reread uh, the books in physical form, I think, ever. I've listened to some of the audiobooks because I had some on tape when I was a kid, and you know, cassette tapes, I would stick them in my boombox and <laughs> listen to them a bunch. I had the seventh one and I had the third one, so I listened to those a lot. And I've watched the movies, you know, so I know the 
Well, I, let me back up. I have read all of the books. I just haven't reread them in physical form um, since I read them the first time. So this has been a fun adventure, just remembering all of the specifics and lots of the tiny delightful details in the book and then having it paired with the gorgeous and whimsical artwork has been a real treat. So no complaints on being in the middle of that one. The other big book that I'm in the middle of right now is The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. This is the third book in the Mistborn trilogy, the original trilogy, and I'm really not very far into it. <laughs> I don't even want to tell you how many pages. I started this a while ago because I read the first two in the spring and early summer and wanted to, you know, continue with the series because I really do like the story and the writing is pretty easy to get through, but they're just so long and because I'm doing my 100 books this year challenge, I started it and was like, oh my god, this one's like 700 pages. I don't know if I really want to take this on right now. So I've been kind of, I put it down for a while, but I'm definitely still planning on continuing with this one really soon. Some other books that Goodreads says I'm in the middle of that I don't really feel like I'm in the middle of, but technically I've started and haven't finished. Um, the Coaching Habit, Say Less, Ask More, and Change the Way You Lead Forever by Michael Bungay Stainier. I am probably about a third of the way through this book, and I wasn't loving it. It wasn't exactly what I had expected. I'm in a master's degree program for clinical mental health counseling and I was kind of thinking that it would be more along the lines of more along the lines of lifestyle coaching and it's much more like business coaching, you know, going into businesses and helping people have better work strategies, which isn't really what I want to do with my life, so it's not necessarily applicable, but there is still some information that I can glean from this, so I do want to finish it. I just haven't yet. Ooh, another one that I am pretty far into, that's not where I am, um, is this book by Danielle Laporte, ooh, shiny, called White Hot Truth. And I really liked Danielle Laporte's other book that I read. She has two, and I don't remember the name, The Desire Map, that's what it's called. I loved that one. This one I'm not so keen on. I bought both myself and my mom a copy uh, because I thought that we could read it together. We kind of like reading self-empowerment type books together at the same time. But both of us are currently enrolled in master's programs, and that doesn't leave a lot of time for sitting around together reading books. So um, we haven't, you know, like at the same time. We haven't found the time or made the time to finish this, but we are pretty darn close to the end. I would say we're probably only about 20 or 30 pages from finishing, so hopefully we can get to that real soon. I know real soon isn't grammatically correct. Oop, I found a few more. So I'm also in the middle of this literary journal, volume 20 of Tin House, which is called Spring Fling. I got more than halfway through it and uh, wasn't loving this one. These are always hit or miss because there are always going to be stories or essays or poems that you love or like at least and then some that you just don't resonate with. They're, you're not on the same frequency whatsoever and so this one for me isn't as up my alley. Um, there have been a lot of stories in here and poems that I just haven't connected with and so I haven't finished it but I maybe I should. That would definitely <laughs> bump up my book count for the year. I probably only have 100 pages left, so. There are two more books here that I'm technically still reading. Um, one is Spirit Junkie by Gabrielle Bernstein. I <laughs> I started this book many years ago, probably five, and never finished it, and so I decided to reread it this year, and I only got, uh, yeah, <laughs> 23 pages in before I stopped, but on my Goodreads I'm reading it, so that must be the truth, right? I do want to read it soon. I just haven't. <laughs> Other books have been priorities. I've been, I want to say, I've been really good this year about reading the books that I buy. So if I buy a book, I try to read it right away, which is why my wrap-ups and my book hauls have been so overlapped, uh, because I've been really, really consistently good about that. But I have so many books that I've started, and I, <laughs> I'd love to pare it down and kind of, you know, finish some of them off so that I don't have them hanging over my head. Another book that I have started again for the second time is Spinster by Kate Bollock, Making a Life of One's Own. This is about a woman in her, I think she just turned 40, and she has deliberately chosen not to get married, but instead to pursue her career, and kind of the stigma that's attached with or attached to career women. It's really an interesting topic. Perhaps I didn't love the writing because I 
twice have started it and twice have abandoned it, but I would like to pick it up because I'd like to finish, you know, continue reading about this important subject matter. Yeah, so how many was that? I don't even know at this point. It was a lot, wasn't it? So, um, <laughs> maybe, I'm, maybe that makes me a bad reader. I don't know. I don't think there's such a thing, but I hope that you all are having a wonderful day. Let me know down in the comments below what books you are currently reading, and I will see you again very soon. Until next time, sending you love.